Hi friends. You know, entry benches are a great addition to almost any home. They let you organize your entryway. And this one can be built by beginning woodworkers from materials sourced at almost any home center. And we're going to show you how to build it today. You don't really need to be an expert woodworker to build our entry bench. And there's a couple of reasons for that. First is, we used dimension lumber when we designed it, so a lot of this you just need to cut to length. And the second is, we take advantage of this exact track saw from Works. The characteristics of this saw means that you don't need to have a shop full of tools. This saw has a special feature that allows anyone to cut exact straight lines. And it's kind of cool because when it's in the standard mode, it's just a standard circular saw. But when you flip it to the exact track, it engages the patented exact track system. As I mentioned earlier, cutting a super straight line with a circular saw can be something of a challenge. But the exact track saw has that unique feature that allows you to take advantage of a straight edge in a special way. Regular dimension lumber is usually pretty straight and pretty flat, but not nearly as flat and true as the factory edge of a sheet of plywood. So my first tip is to rip off a length of the plywood, marking the factory edge to create your go-to straight edge guide for the woodworking project. If this were rough construction, I'd just use the one by four. The last thing you need to do before you actually start cutting up stock for your entry bench is to cut out a square piece of plywood, which will eventually become a cutoff jig. Just three simple pieces will make it. It allows you to use your exact track saw to easily cut your dimension lumber to the exact length that you want. I'll show you what I mean in just a second. A lot of the pieces, legs and the uprights of this bench are made out of one by twos. And we're gonna use the cutoff jig that we just made in order to cut them to the exact size. So I marked it to length. I'll slide it in here, right to the mark. Perfect. Now I'll clamp it in place. Cut it off. So now you see how well this cutoff jig works. These are for the legs. I've got a whole bunch of dimension lumber to cut, so I better get busy. For this entry bench, we glued up the one by two components into an L-shaped leg, and you'll find out how handy that is later on. Now, in order to get that, I'm gonna use this dimension lumber to hold the pieces properly aligned. So, all you need to do is run a little glue. Any kind of wood glue will do. Rub it together. Spread out the glue a little bit. Now clamp the leg into an L. The um, glue needs to cure for at least an hour. It's finally time for us to start assembling the entry bench. We're going to use a Craig jig to form pocket holes, which is the manner in which we are going to join most of the pieces on this bench. It's really simple to use. You use a clamp that comes with it, and this jig is set up to uh, drill the proper holes. I'm gonna take the cross pieces. These are the pieces that go from the front to the back, and I'm gonna set it up right in the middle of the jig. Use the clamp to hold it firmly, and now, I'm going to use this cool bit that um, is designed by the Craig company and provided with the Craig jig to drill the pocket holes. It's very easy to do. So it's got a collar that limits the depth of the cut, the drill. So there needs to be holes on both ends, but that's what it's going to look like. Now we get to assemble the return to the leg. We glue this joint as well as screw it with the pocket hole screws. A little bit of glue. Rub that in place, squeeze out is just fine. Now we use this pocket hole jig, excuse me, the clamp, because it keeps the pieces aligned, not only where they want to be this way, but it also keeps it from jumping when I insert the screws. Now, there's a bit that helps me drive it in. Tight, nice. And that is a perfect joint. Now that we've attached the return to the front leg, we're gonna attach it to the back leg. 
Now this leg is much longer, and that makes this joint a little bit trickier because it's harder to clamp. But if you follow these steps, it'll be easy as pie. First, mark your location for the joint. Then, you put a little glue on to make it stronger. Get it located right where we want. Now I'm gonna use this little tiny piece of wood, some drop, and I'm gonna leave this mark visible so I can see if I accidentally move it while I'm clamping this in place. And then I'm gonna use the Craig jig clamp one more time to hold this piece in line so it doesn't jump up and down. And then just screw it in like before. Now that's a tight joint. We've got the framework for the entry bench all assembled, and now we're gonna move on to the plywood. We need to cut this for the seat and the shelf. A trick that is often used in this case will be putting dimension lumber underneath the plywood. We can set the depth of cut just a little bit uh, deeper than the thickness of the plywood, which means that when I cut through this, it'll score into this, uh, the lumber, but it'll keep the piece of plywood from falling to the floor, which is handy. Once again, we're using the straight edge we cut earlier, and we are lining the factory edge, the one that we put the arrows to, right up to the line that we need to cut. Engage the saw and use a slow but steady pace as you cut across the whole width of the plywood. Now with the plywood cut, the next step is to wrap three edges of the seat with one by two. We attach that with screws and glue, and we're doing that with our old friend, the pocket holes. Now with all the holes drilled with the pocket holes, I've uh, attached the two side pieces flush to the front because the front piece will cover that end. But you might notice that they stick out a little bit far on the, on the back. You might think, oh, you cut those too long. Actually, they wrap around the sides of the back of the entry bench, so I did it on purpose. Now, for some glue and some pocket holes. Both glue and screws will make this a very strong assembly. If you're like me, you might want to use a clamp to help you secure the front piece. Now with the edging glued and screwed in place, we're going to move on to cutting the ship lap to create the back. We're getting very close to being finished. We're going to use some boards to fill in that open space that you see right there. We're using tongue and groove pine that you can get at any home center to simulate shiplap, which is really trendy these days. First thing I need to do is square off one end of each board. We're going to use our handy square cutoff jig that you saw earlier. The reason why you square off one end is that when you make the next cut, I'll make the next cut at 42 inches, that means it will be perfectly accurate. Now, we're gonna to start to glue the back pieces in place. We screw them in place. This one gets three, the rest get one. We'll talk about the end in just a minute. All right, the last piece, the one that everybody looks for. Now, you may have noticed that we countersunk these screw holes. You don't need to do that, but it's a nice tip to keep the piece flat on the back. The other thing you might notice is that this piece of uh, pine overhangs the bottom. Do not worry. I'll come back in just a moment with our straight edge and the exact track saw. Clean the piece up and then we're ready for the next step. So that's it. We've uh, assembled it, painted it now, did some sanding, put on three hooks, and we've got yourself a really nice entry bench. I hope you liked the project, and I hope you learned a few tips as we were building it. I'm Rob Johnstone from Woodworkers Journal. Keep on making sawdust.